Give us 200 likes on this video, guys, and we'll do the ghost hunt tour. There's the face of the old ski hill right here. This hill here is one of the very first places where the Mi'kmaq lived. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're the Caper Couple. And if you're new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. This is waiting for the dog. So today, guys, we're in my own neighborhood here. And we're headed up to Ferris's Hill. So we're out for a little stroll. It's a beautiful day out today for a change. We've had some nasty cold weather the last while. So got a little messy with me and I figured we'd get outside since we uh, haven't been able to get outside a lot lately. So yeah, we're heading up to Ferris's Hill because I want to show you guys a beautiful view from the top again from the reservoir. And plus there's a lot of history on this hill, guys. I'm going to explain that to you in a little bit here once we uh, get up the end of this road and make sure that we can get up the trail first. Because as you can see, all the snow that's down. Got the little dog. Well, she's still pretty much a pup. She's only, what, two years old? So there's lots of coyotes in this area, you guys. Um, we always spot coyotes up around here. Laura and I were walking up this road one day. This is called, uh, actually, I'm not going to tell you the name of it because then you'll know where I live exactly. But yeah, we were walking up this road one day and a fox darted out behind us, about five, ten feet behind us. And right behind that fox, there were two dogs giving chase. I don't remember. Oh, you can see, guys, a little brook there. It's frozen right over. Yeah, there are deer in this area. I was actually picking uh, blueberries one day down that way. There's a big field, probably 10 minutes through the woods that way, and uh, I was bent over picking the berries. And I heard this boom, boom, boom in the ground, and I jumped, jumped up, and uh, there was a big buck eating apples from under the apple tree about 30 feet away from me. It gave me quite a scare, too. So for any of you people that don't know about Cape Breton Island, guys, this... This island has a lot of hauntings, which is why we do a few paranormal videos now and then. Because there's just so much on this island. So much history. And so many paranormal things that go on. We have werewolf stories here, ghost stories. Uh, Jeez, there's just so much to think of. I can't even remember it all. There's so many stories. Our, uh, our very own fortress of Lewisburg holds a lot of those stories too. We may go back there again sometime, guys. We might pick a nice uh, hot day this summer and go back there. Uh, maybe we'll even do the evening uh, ghost hunt thing that goes on there. If little Missy's not too scared. <laughs> she won't rise at me. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't like things like that. So, maybe I can talk her into doing the fortress ghost hunt thing in the evening. Huh? Can I talk you into that? No. How come? Huh? You want to do the ghost hunt? 
Oh, I want to do the ghost hunt. I think the ghost hunt would be pretty fun, eh, guys? What do you think? Give us, uh... uh we don't have lots and lots of views, so let's say give us... Give us 200 likes on this video, guys, and we'll do the ghost hunt tour. Okay, you agree to that? No. Did we get 200 likes? You do it yourself. No, you'll do it with me. 200 likes, guys, and we'll do the ghost hunt tour this summer. Um, other things we have planned. I'd love to get up and do Oak Island. I'm going to try and possibly get some tickets for that. Because I know you can't just go up and roam around on the island. Yeah, get over this side. That car is trying to get in this driveway. So yeah, uh, I know you just can't uh, go up and roam around there, guys. You have to have tickets to get in. And they're usually booked solid for the summer. But we'll see what we can do. Maybe we can call and get a hold of these people and let them know we're YouTubers. They just may get us in there. Anything that's going to give the island more views and uh, more money. Well, so we'll possibly be able to get up here. And by the time I post this video, guys, you're going to see another video where I head out to the point on Sydney Mines down Cranberry. And I actually go way steep in snow trying to get out to that point. <coughs> so, I'm still waiting on some camera gear, some new stuff to come in. So we're stuck filming with this action cam right now, but it's 4K. Just the audio quality isn't the best, guys, but it's not too bad. It really sucks in windy situations. I've got some foam underneath the mic. Oh, sunk there. Almost went to my knees that time. So. I have a little bit to tell you guys. About Ferris's Hill. Now guys, the Mi'kmaq, they were one of the first indigenous peoples in Canada. And they were the first to have regular contact with the Europeans. Now the French colonized parts of their land back in the 17th century. And they had mostly friendly relations with the French. But the arrival of the British, now the arrival of the British is what sparked warfare as France and England were engaged in imperial wars during that time. So many of the Mi'kmaq, they converted to Roman Catholics and they sided with the French in these conflicts. So after the war of the Spanish succession in 1701 to 1714, France ended up surrendering mainland Nova Scotia to the British under the Treaty of Utrecht. And the Mi'kmaq guys, they had no idea of this, nor did they believe it. And during the war between the British and the Mi'kmaq, a series of pre peace agreements were uh, signed, but they didn't concern the surrender of any land. Now in 17, 1763, after the Seven Years' War, British issued royal proclamation defining the relationship between the Crown and the indigenous peoples and this was to protect their uh, territory from settlers however white settlement continued 20 years later british government began granting land to the Mi'kmaq first designated reserves were created in 1801 followed by more in 1820 which was also when cape breton was incorporated to the, to the colony <coughs> Peace and Friendship Treaties uh, protected indigenous rights to hunt and fish food, social and ceremonial purposes, and earn a moderate li livelihood. 
The Supreme Court's decision in the Marshall case in 1999 confirmed such rights. So you can go check that case out, guys. That's uh, that's one that we spoke of when we were in uh, in the Member Two Heritage Museum, where I uh, showed you all those traps, uh, the nets. I mean, the fishing nets that were donated there. They were given back. So uh, various communities around here, they exercise their hunting and fishing rights, such as Escazoni. And why, why I'm speaking about all this, guys, is because this hill here is one of the very first places where the Mi'kmaq lived. Now, I'm not sure exactly where on this hill the encampment was, but I'm guessing it would be down that end because there's a uh, there's a pond down that end where they would have got water from and I'll show you that when we get up the top of the hill here on the reservoir and there's supposedly also an old native burial ground up here somewhere now, I've I've traveled these woods time in and time out guys and I've never ever come across anything like that but that's so many years ago that you're probably not going to even recognize what it looks like today. I'm talking about 17, 1800s, that era. So, yeah, it'd be really, really hard to designate where that is. And uh, back in that day, they would have buried their people with stones and such and possibly laid things like shells and, and stuff like that on the graves, right? As grave markers. Now we've got some, uh, some animal prints going in through the woods, most likely a fox or a coyote. So yeah guys, through all the times I've traveled around this hill, I've traveled around it a lot with motorcycles and ATVs. I've never ended up coming across anything like a native encampment or burial grounds. Now I know a few places that have rocks that may be burial grounds, but they're up the other end and uh, I just don't think this, uh, People would most likely have an encampment near water, right? And I'm telling you guys, the only, the only pond is down that end. And there was no such thing as a reservoir up here back then. So we may get you a sundown view up here. It's coming on evening. Coming on evening, guys. Nice pink sky out, so it's probably going to be really nice out again tomorrow. Hopefully. My pipes ended up freezing this week in the, uh, in the bathroom. It was that cold out. Like I say, it was probably more than minus 20. Come on, pupper. So guys, using this gimbal is just amazing. You get such a smooth picture. No bouncing and jittering around. My nose is running. But yeah, you can see that. I'm here tilting my hand back and forth and everything. And just get a great view with this. Gives an awesome picture, awesome stabilization. I had subscribers a few months back telling me to pick something like this up, but they were thinking I was filming with my phone. Uh, yeah. 
gave that up after the first few videos and I got myself a camcorder. So here you go guys, we're at the reservoir. We're gonna go up on top. Get you guys a nice view. Just like in one of my earlier videos, it was probably the fourth, fifth video I made. I drove up here. And I came right up on top of the reservoir with the dirt bike. And I took a little view the camera the roadway we just came up. There's another one takes you over that end of the hill. There's one down here that takes you out to the highway. And uh, this one takes you down to another roadway. Here's a town in North Sydney. You get a nice view of the whole town. Marine Atlantic. And anybody that watches uh, Joe Craftedman Wilson channel on YouTube, he's uh, he lives down that way. Takes video in around there. Always filming that church. So look at that, guys. Isn't that beautiful? Just an amazing view of the town. And we got a ferry coming in. See that? One of the Newfoundland ferries coming in in the distance. Can't wait until winter's over. That harbor will just pollute with ice. That's how you tell when winter's coming to an end. It'll fill up with ice and then it'll push all back out and then winter's done. So I got a little bit of wind here. I hope it doesn't bother. There's the face of the old ski hill right here. This roadway here goes right down, stretches right down to the bottom. I've got pictures of that home. I guess uh, if I can, I'll post a picture of it. And it'll be right about here. Uh, here. So, that sun going down, guys. Isn't that pretty? This is your reservoir.
Oh, there's a highland way over that way. There's the other road where I'm talking about, guys. There it is, yeah. So, with all that being said, guys, we'll end the video here. So, just remember until next time, keep subscribing. Comment down below, make sure your notifications are on. And like, and like. Hit that like button, give us a like. And catch you later, people. Bye, guys.